Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, we're out here once again working on our 68 Plymouth Satellite, the Ratty Satty. And we're sitting right now about 35 days or so from needing to have this car ready to drag race and autocross. And we are nowhere close to being ready. But today is going to be a huge day in the shop because we finally get to build the engine that's going in this car. Now, those of you that may not be aware, probably look at this and think it's your run of the mill 440, which it really is. It's originally a 73 440 block out of a motorhome and a very, very low compression engine. Did the math on it, it actually checks out to be 7.93 to 1, which is just not going to work for building high horsepower and running the times that I really want to in Vegas. So we're doing a whole lot of work to this thing, and I may have already gotten started on a little bit, and I'll get to that here in just a second. Now, as I mentioned, this thing is a very low compression motor and I did all the checking on it and did some measurements and it actually came out. The piston to deck height clearance was about 160 in the hole. That's not 16,000, so that's 160. And yeah, it basically means you're not gonna get much power out of the engine. And so a whole lot of upgrades were needed. Now, I reached out to a good buddy of mine. A lot of you guys may know him. Um, he goes by Just Mopar Joe. He's got a fantastic channel on YouTube. Definitely go give him a follow, check him out, but he's really helped me out with specking out everything for this engine. I'm really trying to target that 500, maybe a little bit over horsepower build for this car. And uh, yeah, I think he cooked up a pretty good recipe to get there. Now I'm not gonna spill the beans just yet as far as what's gonna go into this engine, but in this episode, we are gonna put new pistons, we're gonna put a new cam in it, full new top end. It's getting a tunnel ram with some Edelbrock VRS 4150 carbs. It's going to be badass, and I'm hoping by the end of this episode to have everything ready to drop into the car. Now, the first thing we did to this engine was completely tear it down, tore it all the way down to the bare short block, and started putting it together here over the last few days. And, you know, this was a great, great platform to start with. Everything checked out really nice. The cylinder bores are in amazing shape. And uh, yeah, it was a great builder to start from. It's never been bored out. I truly believe this is one of those low mile original motorhome 440s. I mean, you guys can see, I haven't really done anything to this aside from dingleberry hone, each and every one of the cylinders. And you guys can see, I mean, they turned out like mirror finish and very, very happy with how everything turned out. And now let me just say, I am definitely not an engine building expert. I'm barely, you know, uh, competent at installing sheet metal on these cars. And so a lot of the info that I'm gonna share with you guys today comes out of this book right here, How to Rebuild the Big Block Mopar. It's a really, really nice book and it goes step by step by step of everything that you guys need to do to not only tear down, but inspect and rebuild um, your big blocks. And it's a really, really good book to have. I've definitely referred to it a lot with this build. Now let's first start off with pistons and I'm gonna share with you guys a little learning lesson here, okay? Now with other cars that I have rebuilt the engines on, I always had like the retainers that were in the sides of the pistons here. And uh, you know, your, pist your rod ends up floating on this pin here in the middle and you know, that kind of stays between those two retainers. Well, when I went to go pull the rods out of this thing, I realized that these 440s have pressed uh, fit wrist pins. And I will just tell you right now, they are a freaking nightmare to get out. And yes, I have watched the Uncle Tony video on this. I watched several videos on this and thought that I knew what I was doing um, to get it done. Now, I'll tell you where I went wrong because these are, yes, brand new Keith Black Pistons that are ruined. <laughs> and that's why this video has taken so long to get out. But basically, to get the old ones out, all you got to do... You end up heating up the pin here, used a yellow map gas cylinder, heat everything up, and then I actually just pounded them out of the sides of the pistons, and they came right out and didn't have any issue. Actually, down there is our pistons there. Let me know if you guys want one. I might give those away, <laughs> but yeah. So you pound them out, watched a few videos on how to put them in, and basically the video said to just take a torch and heat um, you know, basically the end of the rod here until it's, you know, like a dull red and then take your pins and push them through. Well, the first one I did gave me a ton of confidence. It actually slid right through, centered up, fantastic. Um, and I was pretty excited about it, not gonna lie. So then I go to the second one and I go to push in this pin. And again, it is red ass hot. <clears throat> and I'm sitting there for like three, four minutes with the map gas directly on the end of the rod here. And uh, I go to put in the pin, it goes in halfway and gets stuck. 
and I had about 10 seconds of working time to, uh, to push the pin in. And, you know, I start panicking, trying to get it out. I cannot get it out. And these are aluminum, okay? And they are very uh, prone to, um, you know, getting galled up. And you guys can see right there, I put this in a soft jaw vise, clamped it tight, and absolutely ruined that piston. So that was the first one. I uh, then <laughs> took the torch, heated it up again, went to go do another one. I had the exact same thing happen. And then I panicked once again, the damn piston with the rod rolled off the bench and broke the freaking piston skirt. And I was heartbroken, not gonna lie. Uh, learned my lesson there, I will never do that again. <laughs> and I ended up having to buy two brand new Keith Black pistons um, from Summit Racing. Now, one thing that I did learn is that these come balanced, okay? And when you give them the information, you can see the numbers there, 23. Um, you know, because these all, like I said, are balanced and they're match set. And so you have to make sure that you give that info to them so that way they can match everything back up and send you what you need to put your stuff together. So I took my stuff, uh, you know, the pistons, the rods, everything down to uh, Jensen Automotive here in Ogden, Utah, explained the story, um, you know, admitted uh, <laughs> very humbly that I'd screwed up. And yeah, they had it done in a day and they actually put these in a forge to heat them up and uh, slide them in and they are flawless. Okay, so this is one that they did. Um, and it also turns out that that first one that I mentioned, I actually installed the rod upside down. <laughs> so lesson learned, if you're not familiar with it or you don't have the right tools, don't do it. So yeah, it's about a $200, $250 mistake doing that. So yeah, again, some good wall hangers here and uh, like I said, maybe we might give these away or something. I don't know. Let me know if you guys are interested in those. So anyway, so I got them back here to the house and uh, Dingleberry honed everything. Like I said, I mean, the cylinder walls are damn near perfect in this thing. And this is, you know, no more complicated than what it looks like, guys. You throw this thing on a DeWalt drill, um, oiled up the cylinders really nice and ran it through. I think I did about 20 passes for each cylinder and it cleaned up great. I mean, there's no, uh, you know, ridge at the top of the piston, nothing like that at all. And uh, yeah, cleaned everything up really nice. So as you can see, I've already stuffed seven of the cylinders and I wanted to kind of show you guys my process here for installing the pistons in the block. And here's the rings that we're gonna be using for this. Now I already have installed these, as I said earlier on the first seven, um, but you know, looking at the kit, it all comes bagged. It's all numbered, first ring, second ring. I've gone ahead, I've already put the oiling rings on here. You can see there's actually three there. There's kind of the big one there in the middle and two to sandwich it on top and bottom. Um, but from here, what we do is that we'll push those down into the bores. We can then use our feeler gauge here, take a quick measurement. And based off of what we're going to be using this setup for, which is really a, you know, kind of a street strip setup, um, just running NA on, you know, typically pump gas, they call out a 28 thousandths gap. And so if they don't fit, which frankly, none of them have so far, they give you a little bit more material than what you need. Um, I then use my very fancy, uh, $20 Amazon ring trimmer, which has actually worked pretty flawlessly so far. So let's go ahead, let's stuff these rings into the bores and I'll show you guys how these go on.
All right, so we got our last piston installed. I also went ahead and installed the Melling M63 high volume oil pump, as well as the fuel block off plate here, because we are gonna be running an aeromotive electric fuel pump system on the car. So time to shift gears a little bit and start installing our camshaft and our timing gears. Okay, and what we're looking at here is a huge improvement from stock. Originally, this engine would have had the flat tappet cam in it, and this is a brand new full roller cam setup from Comp Cams. I'm really excited about this. It should definitely make things run a whole lot smoother and also pick up quite a bit of power as well. Now, this is definitely not the most aggressive cam setup in the world by any means. We're running 224 on the intake, 230 on the exhaust at 50. So a good mix between street and strip, but definitely not a race only um, cam. It shouldn't be too rowdy um, for us to drive. Now, we will have to run a few different things. We have to switch over to the time, different timing gear set that allows for the cam button here in the middle. This is setup is from Cloy's really, really nice high-end double roller setup. See, came with the timing chain, also came with the bearing that fits behind the top gear, as well as the new oil drive for the bottom. Now we will also have to add the bronze distributor gear here. Got this from 440 source. This actually just plugs straight in um, to the hole where the distributor goes and plugs right into that brand new Melling oil pump that we just put in as well. So all this stuff fits in the exact same factory locations. There's no modifications needed for the block. It's just a matter of getting the whole set up right here. So let's get this thing out of the wrapper. We'll get it greased up and let's get it in the engine. All right, so we got our cam, our timing set, and a couple other things installed into the engine and uh, had even a few extra minutes last night, so got everything cleaned up and ended up painting the engine. And I tell you what, this engine looks completely brand new. I mean, I guess in a lot of ways it really is. But man, let me tell you, this Hemi Orange engine paint that's on here added at least 50 horsepower to this engine. What do you think? No. No. <laughs> he calls me on my bullshit all the time, believe me. But uh, yeah, it looks really, really good. and. Uh, yeah, can't wait to keep on putting this thing together. So we got our cam in place, made sure to use a bunch of extra assembly lube on that, slid that in, got our new cloys timing set in here, torqued our ARP studs down to, uh, I believe, 45 inch pounds, or foot pounds, excuse me, 45 foot pounds. And then we also have installed our cam button. Now, one little thing on here, this thing actually would not fit into place with the ARP hardware. So end up having to index some spaces on there as you guys can see so that way it'll fit nice and flush to the timing set so this part right here ends up riding on the back side of the timing cover and prevents the cam from actually pushing out um, you know under load or deceleration what have you so that'll make sure that our cam stays right where it needs to be got our new oil pump in place we also got a brand new oil filter on there did that just to kind of close things up here on the uh, the oiling system because we're going to be throwing on the timing cover here in just a second. So I guess from here we can now start cleaning up our mating surfaces for our front timing cover as well as getting everything prepped and ready for this Mylodon 7 quart oil pan setup. Now if you were to buy this kit from the store it's roughly five six hundred bucks I believe um, and it comes with a lot of different parts and pieces to it you guys can see this is a clean one owner uh, pan here that I picked up for my buddy Jeremy over at Shade Tree Vintage Auto. If you haven't done so, definitely give him a look. He's got some really cool stuff going on. And he will also be at Matt's with a whole bunch of cars. But anyways, yeah, so we got this pan, great deal on the pan, and then had to go back and buy everything else. So we got the windage tray. We also got a pickup, which that shape kind of concerns me. I hope that does 
fit to the bottom of that pan. If, uh, if it doesn't, <laughs> we're gonna be in trouble and have a big delay on our hands. And then we also have two gaskets here, two pan gaskets, because you will need one on the bottom side of the windage tray and then another one on top of the windage tray between the tray and the pan. So don't forget to order two of those. And yeah, from there we can then bolt on everything with our brand new ARP hardware, which we have for basically everything on the exterior of the engine, as well as the head studs, which will come after we seal up the bottom side of the block. And this is the stuff that really does make a huge difference once you get it bolted on to the engine. So thankfully, we've got some very capable hands here. Are you ready to help? Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get these parts on the engine. Alrighty, so we got our heads all torqued down, everything turned out just fine. And uh, yeah, now would be the time where we would normally install the lifters, which as you can see here, we've got our Howard Cams lifter set up in there. These are pretty damn awesome, I must say. But now comes time for push rods and rocker arms. And unfortunately, we ran into a little bit of an issue. So we went ahead, we bolted up our brand new Harlan Sharp roller rockers here to the engine. Um, these are very, very nice, by the way. I mean, they come with a pretty hefty price tag on them, but they're really, really sweet. Made in the USA, and uh, yeah, happy to be running them on the car. But we got those bolted up, we measured everything out, and it came out to a push rod length that we needed of 8.220. So figured, you know, 8.250 should be something that's on the shelf. Well, I hopped onto 440 Source's website, and I found the shortest ball and cup design that they offered. Um, without going full custom and unfortunately these are way too big. These are like 8.567s um, Yeah, and we had to order a brand new set from Mancini Racing To get the right length and I mean they were so long in fact that like they were bottoming out on the bottom side of the rocker here Where the ball wasn't even poking out the bottom at all. So Not gonna work for us and unfortunately now we're waiting 
So to occupy my time, I went ahead, painted up everything on the engine here, started putting together the accessories. We got our water pump on, we got our balancer on, and I went ahead, I actually started unboxing a bunch of things too that have been sitting here. We got our brand new Mopar Performance valve covers, which are gorgeous, by the way, holy cow. Got these on eBay, I needed something that was a little bit taller than factory to run the roller rockers, and I absolutely love the look of these, so really happy to have those. We got brand new valley pan gaskets, valve cover gaskets, pretty much every gasket on this engine is being replaced. It's all brand new. So then when we were done unboxing a few things, we went ahead and we started putting things on the car. So we've got our brand new fuel tank here. We've got a brand new pickup. Everything is sized to be three eighths. Went ahead and ran all brand new hard line here across the bottom of the car. And uh, yeah, <laughs> even went as far as installing the brand new Aeromotive electric fuel pump up in there. We got our harness ran all the way to the front of the car, ready to be hooked up. And uh, yeah, so kind of running out of things to do here. And rather than sit on my hands and kind of wait uh, for those push rods to come in, we are going to call quite the audible here. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, as much as I wish I could finish building the engine on the stand before we put it into the car, while we're waiting, it's just not gonna work that way. <laughs> we need to keep making really good progress each and every day. And I think we're about like three, three and a half weeks now before Vegas. So yeah, I'm kind of at a point now that a lot of other things are hinging on getting this engine in, getting the suspension in for the last time to finish the brake works, finishing up the steering once the headers are in place. So all that stuff has to happen with the engine up into the car. So we're gonna have to start getting this thing installed. Now that comes with dropping that whole front suspension out, getting this engine transmission, everything mounted up onto the top of that and putting it all back up into the car. So, you know, I say we're running out of time. We got still a few weeks, but I tell you guys what, there's always gonna be those little things that you need last minute. And unfortunately those come with lead times and we're gonna be waiting and hopefully we'll have everything buttoned up <laughs> before we have to get on the road. So yeah, let's not waste any time. Let's get this suspension dropped out and let's get this engine mounted up into the car.
Now, first impressions with the engine in the car with the tunnel ram strapped to the top of it, it looks so freaking awesome. <laughs> I can't hide the excitement very well. And uh, yeah, really, really happy with everything. And uh, you know, it does sit a little bit lower in the engine bay than what I was thinking. I thought for sure this thing would actually be about as tall as the windshield, but it goes maybe about halfway up the windshield. It's really not that bad. It will obstruct some vision, but uh, it's not, you know, as awful as I thought it would actually be. But I have done quite a bit of work off camera. We already got our headers bolted up. We've got our oil dipstick in. We've got our linkage hooked up. I went ahead and purchased uh, from Amazon. Actually, I tell you, what, Amazon has saved my butt with so many parts on this thing. It's not even funny and hardware, gaskets, all that kind of stuff. I actually bought that cable, which to me, I could not tell any difference whatsoever from the low car or lock car, whatever you call it, um, style cable. That cable runs about a hundred bucks from Summit. I bought it for $20 on Amazon. Cut to fit, looks good, functions good. Um, well, I guess it functions for the most part well. Um, the engine right now is kicked back just a touch because the transmission is not bolted up and holding it up into place. And I have direct contact with that wiper motor right there. So once we get the transmission bolted in, which we will be doing here in just a few minutes, we'll lift that up and hopefully we'll be able to um, cycle the throttle because that accelerator pump actually hits directly on there and it provides a pretty nasty uh, sound when you do that. But at this point, there's really not a whole lot left. My parts pile is much smaller than it was previously. And uh, really from here, guys, it is transmission, which the beautiful 727 that's going in this thing is right there. And uh, we'll get that mounted up. We can get our exhaust finished up at that point. Um, can get our transmission linkage, which again, another Amazon score found this cable, which is basically the exact replica of the B&M shifter cable, which I've purchased twice and melted twice. Uh, <laughs> 20 bucks, Amazon, can't beat it. Um, we got our 440 source mini starter, which is about half the size and weight of what the factory starter was in this car. Um, all new hardware from 440 source. Highly, highly recommend their intake manifold bolts, especially if you're running an aftermarket aluminum intake, or in this case, you know, the tunnel ram. They are plenty long enough actually to sandwich the plate in between and still reach and get plenty of thread through there. So highly recommend that kit for you guys. Um, but we've also got our spark plugs here. And man, I think that's about it. We've still got to make some fuel lines. I'm waiting on some connections. Those should be here in a couple days, but we got our B&M torque converter. And then as I showed you guys, we have this beautiful 727. Now this thing has had the, uh, the Rust-Oleum rebuild done to it, okay? But uh, this is the one that was out of the 66 Fury and the shifts nice and crisp. All the seals on it look to be rebuilt. The only issue, um, these threads on this <laughs> uh, transmission cooler line here are completely wiped out. So we'll swap those with the old one. Um, but man, aside from that, super, super clean guys. Seals look good. Dipstick looks good. It's full of oil. It's not leaking on my floor, nothing like that. So should be able to uh, fill that torque converter up, slap that on the front of this thing and uh, bolt it straight in. Now, once we get this thing running and driving, which hopefully we will here in the next day or two, we'll be able to hopefully take this out, take it for a spin and see if there's any sort of a shift kit or a reverse manual setup. If there's not, we actually have one from our buddy Mopar Joe. So if you haven't done so yet, definitely check him out guys for sure. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we are throwing so many cool parts of this thing. It's not even funny. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's throw this transmission in, let's get all of our accessories hooked up, and uh, I've made you guys wait long enough for this video, we're going to try to fire this thing. So let's get it done. All right, you guys, well, we made quick work out of getting the transmission in, and yeah, we got a whole lot of other work done too. All right, now taking a quick peek underneath the car here, and I apologize, guys, some of you are gonna be a little bit upset, but uh, I had to get a lot of work done in a couple days, and I frankly did not record uh, any of that. So <laughs> there's been a ton of work done on the car, and it's really, really close to actually starting right now, but I've got a good buddy of mine, Brooke, that's coming over tomorrow night, 
and we hope to actually fire this thing up and uh, man, crossing my fingers, it all goes well. <laughs> but, you know, putting things back on the car, it's the reverse order, taking it off. The exhaust is the same, drive shaft is the same. Transmission pretty much the same. It's the 727 that bolted up just in place of the old one. Um, but our electric cutouts, everything is hooked up, wired up, should be good to go. We also ran brand new Willwood um, emergency brake cables from the front to the back. So that should provide some good stopping power for us in the event that we need it. Um, we also got our steering rack hooked up. We had to adapt the, uh, um, the steering column to the power rack and pinion set up there, but it comes with a couple different swivels and collars and uh, yeah, just cut the rod to length and fit it. It's not too big of a deal to get in, but really underneath guys, no major issues whatsoever. Now let's take a step back and you're gonna notice something that is radically different. And that is the addition of the Billet Specialties forged two-piece aluminum wheels. And these things are so freaking badass, you guys. I mean, I, I, when I got them, I pulled them out of the box and the wheel is so insanely light to pick up. It, uh, it's, it's something else. I've never felt a wheel that light before, but yeah, wrapping them in nice BF Goodrich radials. Um, it should be some great autocross wheels, some great street wheels. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you guys can even see how close that is, but that caliper on the inside of there may be an eighth of an inch of clearance. So I couldn't have gotten any tighter. I wanted to run 15s on this car and I've always wanted to run these wheels specifically and they're absolutely awesome. So 15 by eights in the front, ended up going 10 inches in the back here. And again, when I got these wrapped uh, in rubber, I brought them to the house and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are bigger than the <laughs> slicks are in the back, but they're actually the exact same size um, with the tires. So they fit perfectly on the inside of our rolled um, quarter panels here. And then um, I did have to run a wheel spacer on here with longer studs. So I went with the ARP uh, three inch studs for the front and the back. So yeah, I have to do this actually for NHRA requirements, but also um, to clear the wheel, to have enough poking out here. And then also, um, yeah, the, the, the stock factory stuff would not reach that far. So, but yeah, we got spacers on there, everything fits. And uh, I'll show you guys what this thing looks like on the ground here in just a second. Now taking a look here with it on the ground, man, does it look good. And it tucks just slightly um, in the front. It's got about the same stance, but uh, man, it looks awesome. And it looks absolutely awesome from the back too, because those are definitely some pretty wide street tires. But uh, yeah, I, th I believe they're 295s in the back and 265s, 275s in the front, but they're wide, both front and rear are very wide. And uh, we've got good clearance all the way around. Okay, now taking a look underneath the hood here, or well, I guess, yeah, there's, there's no hood, but you guys know what I mean. Taking a look at the engine here, it looks so badass, you guys. I hate the thought of even having to put a hood over the top of this because I wanna just stare at it all day, every day. Now, there's a lot going on in here, and I apologize again, guys, I, I had to get this stuff done. Um, so didn't film really any of it, but let me walk you through everything. A lot of this stuff, parts from the old build setup. So, you know, same battery. We took this radiator out of that 66 Fury. So it's a little bit thicker, um, but you know, we hooked our transmission lines to the bottom of this. We've also reused the hoses on here. I still have to run the line um, before we get this thing fired up to our overflow bottle, which I've hidden here in the front. Um, but accessory wise, pretty much exactly the same stuff. I did have to get some custom fittings from the old um, power steering setup to the new rack and pinion. Um, set up. So it's just a matter of getting um, the right fittings and connections to adapt those two together. But the MSD ready to run distributor, I can't say enough good things about that. Um, I, I believe it was four wires to hook the whole thing up. Two of them go to your coil. One uh, is a ground to your block and the other one is a tax signal and it's ready to go. There's literally nothing else in the instructions. Um, it did include some extra springs and some bushings to set your advance curve and everything else. But yeah, dropped it straight in. We set it to top dead center and uh, got everything marked. Hopefully got all of our wires <laughs> in the right places. Um, but yeah, it's super, super simple. Now I will say the cost is probably as much as running the MSD Pro Billet plus the 6AL box, 
But I tell you what, like four wires versus all that other shit around in your engine bay and running all these wires to everything, um, I will use that every time. Now, what you're probably scratching your head over is what in the hell are all these lines running all over the engine? Now, <laughs> this is all brand new fuel lines and you know, we have fuel going to every single, um, you know, one of the, the, uh, the bowls and the carbs. So we've got a four port aeromotive fuel pressure regulator with their matching gauge here. So hoping for around six PSI or so once we get this thing fired up. But uh, yeah, we've got <laughs> independent lines running up with all good clearance. It's also pretty tight to the engine. So that way when we go to cut the hood, um, we can get it as tight as we possibly can around the carbs here. But uh, I'm really happy with how that turned out. And I'll be honest with you, it looks freaking awesome too. <laughs> it looks absolutely badass. But it clears our linkage really good, which was kind of tricky. Um, and uh, yeah, it also clears the wiper motor. And also eventually, not anytime immediately soon, but I would love to run a dual plate nitrous setup on this. And we can actually just simply lift that up and uh, should be good to go. Now, I will say T-Bone made a custom, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but there is a dimple dyed bracket there that my man T-Bone helped me put together. Um, he's been dimple dyeing everything in the damn shop, I swear, lately, but it, uh, it looks fantastic and really happy with that. I did put one connection here down on the bottom and that's for if this thing ever needs to be serviced, we can actually just disconnect it right here, take all the lines off and we can lift the engine out. And this line over here is enough out of the way that you can lift the motor up no problem. But same headers. Um, ooh, uh, these plug wires are different. The top of it's like the HEI connection. So I had to run different wires here um, to the spark plugs. I actually had an old um, Corvette build, a C3 Corvette, and I had an extra set of the MSD wires. And so I used those um, and worked those out. The only issue is that they were 90 degree um, connections, which actually worked out better in some cases, but there were others that were like almost directly on the header. And so I ended up picking up some, uh, I think they're DEI, uh, boots there, um, plug boots. So that way, hopefully we won't have any burn throughs when we get this thing up and running. But yeah, this, this thing turned out so good guys. Oh, lastly, uh, the coil, we hooked it up towards the back there. Um, <laughs> if you guys remember back, this car actually had two complete wiring harnesses in it. It had the original um, uh, wiring harness that was in this car. And then whoever had put the 440 in this thing originally had actually put another harness on top. And so where the second <laughs> ignition relay or starter solenoid used to be, um, I actually pulled that thing out and uh, we mounted the coil there in its place. So um, the only wiring that we had to modify or adjust on this thing to actually run the um, MSD distributor is that we did have to jumper um, what would have been the ignition ballast uh, connectors here. So did an emergency call real quick to my buddy Mopar Joe the other day, asked him uh, what we needed to do and said, yep, just jump those wires and should be good to go. So, but guys, it's damn near time to get this thing going. Uh, we've got coolant in the radiator. We've got oil in this thing. Uh, transmission fluids already topped off. I mean, pretty much good to go. So I guess at this point, there's nothing left to do, but get this thing fired up. Let it rip, Tater Chow. Oh, I, oh, I just gotta not get my arm in this fan, this man-eating fan. All right. <laughs> Dude, it's like, you know. <laughs> Ready? I am. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, we're all hooked up. Yes, we are. Do you want to run the throttle? I will run the throttle. Yeah, okay. Scream if it leaks or if there's a fire. Yep. Or I'll scream and run. Yeah. Ready? See that? 800. Can you see that? 729. 729. Yeah, can you yeah. even see that? Okay, yeah. yeah, that's your idle RPM. That's what I was showing you. That's what it's idling at. Awesome. Yeah, I was just a tick retarded again. Oh, so. story of my life. <laughs>
Alrighty, you guys. Well, if this was an episode on Motor Trend, now would be about the time that the door would roll up, the car would roll out, and we would just sail off into the sunset in a beautiful cloud of tire smoke. But unfortunately, this is not TV, and unfortunately, the car's not quite ready yet. So a few things we still need to button up on it. We've got, uh, number one, we've got to get it legal so we can take it out. We've got to get front-end alignment also because the, uh, the tires are a little bit pigeon-toed, so we're going to try to straighten that out before we take it there. But uh, we've also got a hellacious transmission cooler leak that we definitely have to address. Um, the aluminum fittings that are welded into the radiator, the threads are just completely wiped out on that thing. So going to end up running an uh, external cooler that should be here tomorrow, so we should be able to get that done. And uh, just a lot of little odds and ends, guys. But man, this thing came together, and uh, in three weeks, <laughs> we pretty much built an entire car. And uh, I don't know, I hope the audio comes through good enough. Uh, number one, to hear my excitement, but number two, to hear how damn good this car runs. It runs so stinking good. And I promise you guys, it is to no credit of my own. I have the best buddies around me with the most knowledge that I could ever ask for that, uh, you know, and I'll just run down the list real quick. Mopar Joe, huge thanks, dude. Help me spec out everything for this engine. Help me get it all right. And I promise you, if something would have been wrong, I would have thrown his ass under the bus so fast in this video. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. He's a great dude. Thank you so much for the help. Jeremy from Shade Tree helped provide a ton of the parts for this thing. He, he gave me the tunnel ram. He gave me the oil pan. Um, just help, you know, throw some things at this build to make it come together fast. And then you guys saw my buddy Brooke that was here to help me get this thing in tune and timed and synchronized and uh, just so much stuff above my head that I don't know. But I've learned in life that it's always not about what you know, but a lot of times it's who you know. And, you know, in the Mopar world, there's guys with just so much knowledge. And I'm very thankful to have some buddies around me that are willing to share that knowledge. So thank you guys. Can't <laughs> tell you how much I appreciate it. So in the next video, guys, we're going to wrap things up. We're going to get it all buttoned up. And uh, I promise you, there's going to be some tire smoke. So I'm used to saying there's like 50 days till mats, 60 days until mats. It's next week. And we got work to do. So I'm going to get back at it, and uh, I promise you it's not going to be another three weeks before the next video is out. So stay tuned. I'll see you all again real soon.